once you've downloaded the app, it's really easy to use. Say you see a suspicious person, like my photographer Joe over here. You take your phone, take a photo, and you can send police exactly what you're seeing. And if you're wondering what Molly's does to your body, here's a very long list. Confusion. Anxiety, depression, paranoia, sleep problems, muscle tension, tremors, involuntary teeth clenching. You need to see that again? Muscle cramps, nausea, faintness, chills, sweating, and blurred vision. Right now, the Susquehanna River level is at four feet. Engineers in the city say they expect about 10 inches of rain to fall by Sunday night. That means they don't expect it to hit above flood stage, which is 17 feet. This lawyer isn't alone. Tribex says in the past five days, he's received calls from about 50 lawyers from around the world, all who want to get in on this. They're doing. And you can learn a lot on YouTube, like how to fold a week's worth of clothing for your vacation and bring it onto a carry-on. But that's not the only thing. You can also learn how to change your oil. Eva, I know you just got there. What can you tell us? Rob, aside from some Capitol uh, police patrolling the outside here of the state Capitol building, it's quiet out here. All the action is taking place inside the building where they're trying to locate this alleged bomb. Now, I'm told that around 4.15, 4.30 today, someone called the state police saying there's a bomb inside of this building, the state Capitol building. Then they called back saying they would detonate that bomb in two hours. Again, a very credible threat, I'm being told. Uh, now, everybody has been, the building has been cleared. Everybody has been uh, told to leave. All the entrances are closed. I'm also told that the buildings surrounding the state capitol area, they're not affected as of right now. What's going on right now inside of the, of the building is that police and canines are sweeping it again, looking for that bomb. And I'm told that process could take, the alleged bomb rather, and I'm told that process could take anywhere from two to three hours. For now, we are live with it off in County Mobile Newsroom in Harrisburg. Eva Roman, CBS 21 News. So the County Mobile Newsroom with Eva Roman. And Eva, what can you tell us? Well, Rob, it's a very active scene out here right now. Let me show you. Firefighters are trying to get the SUV out, but not only that, they're trying to get the three dogs that are inside, uh, I believe they're German Shepherds, inside of that SUV out. I'm told that the woman who was driving the SUV, she was taken to a local hospital, but it looks like she wasn't hurt too bad. Right here in front of John Harris High School, you do have some officers stationed there where you see the white van. And over in this direction down on Market Street and Hale Avenue, you see plenty of police action there. Rob, let me show you what's going on right now. You still have firefighters on the roof of that arena. I'm told that they do have the fire under control. But as Jesse may have mentioned, there were some heat exhaustion, smoke inhalation injuries. Firefighters say four people in total were uh, suffered from that. Three were firefighters. One was a Hershey Entertainment and Resort employee. Eva. Robin Tanya, it is not working out too well for me out here tonight. Take a look at my umbrella. I mean, I just got out here for a little bit more, you know, shelter, and this is what I come up with here. But let me tell you why. Number one, the wind. Still going strong out here in York County. Number two, look at the rain. I mean, I'm at standing at a parking lot, and uh, we showed you this about an hour ago. It has gotten about a half an inch to an inch deeper. If you can imagine what the roadways look like, this is just a parking lot. With bulletproof vests on, we hop in Corporal Milo Hooper's Harrisburg Police SUV and hit the streets. In no time at all, a disorderly conduct call comes in. He hits the lights and speeds to the scene. The longtime member of the Harrisburg Police Force knows that these days, those kind of calls can mean someone's high on bath salts. The call turns out to be nothing, but it reminds Hooper of a bath salt encounter from not too long ago. Went out there, uh, and the guy was kind of amped up, out of control. The CERT team ended up responding. He just kept walking back and forth, pacing back and forth in the attic, only like a 20 or 30 foot area, and the whole time for three to four hours. He just was hooked and he couldn't get off of it. And what he wanted to do was um, suicide by police. Special training is what's taught Harrisburg officers how to spot a bath salt user and what to do. It, it's pretty much the same signs as um, someone on high on PCP, um, they're agitated, they, they seem agitated, like very amped up. And ready to strike, even at Excuse police that? officers. You really want me to come out, don't you? All they want to do is get high, but they're not aware of how this is affecting them and their surroundings. 713, go ahead. When these officers come up to you and tell you about their uh, stories about people high on bath salts, what's your, what's your reaction to all that? Well, 
it's just like any story when an officer tells you any any experience they have. Um, the first your first reaction is to start to evaluate what you're hearing and uh, to use it to your own experiences and try to learn from anything they have done or haven't done. Ad selling bath salts in the local paper make it tougher for police. Even though the synthetic drug is banned in Pennsylvania, people have found ways to create loopholes and sell them by changing the formula. All right, time for on these streets, officers rely on their training and recent increased experiences, right, hoping down. each bath salt encounter on will be their last. Carrie Lynn Troop was at a ballpark off London Vale Road in Paradise Township with her 11 year old son Tyler, who was there to play in a game, and two of her other kids. Around 8 or so Friday night, the rain and wind came fast and hit hard. Everyone moved under the pavilion. That's when Carrie Lynn moved her SUV closer. Suddenly, the pavilion came crashing down. There was a lot of uh, panicking. There was a lot of uh, the kids were scared. I mean, it was, and my son was hysterical. It was, it was very, it was heartbreaking to watch them go through it, to hear them screaming, and, and didn't to hear all these people like they didn't know what to do. Kids and parents were trapped underneath. The pavilion also landed on Carrie Lynn's SUV with her two kids inside. I didn't know which way to go. I mean, I had one kid that was underneath the pavilion and two that were in the truck that it just fell on. Her kids were okay. Fire crews rescued the others. Some went to the hospital, others walked away from the scene. Police said there were minor injuries. Carrie Lynn's quick decision to move her SUV kept the pavilion from crashing down even more. The corner of the pavilion actually went through the um, passenger side windshield of the car while they were in it. Um, I saw they were okay, so I went around to find Tyler and trying to find between all the debris and all the people and it was pitch black. I finally found my son, grabbed him up and took him to the car. And just when she thought things couldn't get any worse, Carrie Lynn got home and saw that half of her roof was gone. Her fence torn apart and trees all over the place. Right now we're just hoping that there's no further damage and that we, you know, we can salvage anything. But they're just things, she says, ones that can be replaced. Robin Tanya, 12 year old Sophia Giuliano decided to do this after watching a friend of hers at church suffer from cancer. She hopes that her actions inspire you to do the same thing. At Salon Blue in Spring Itsbury Township, there's a lot of hair cutting and coloring going on, but this client's visit is a bit different. 12 year old Sophia Giuliano is chopping it all off. She said, What do you think about me doing that? And I said, I think my heart's going to burst out of my chest. I'm really anxious and freaked out, but I'm excited at the same time. Sophia's inspiration to shave her head, donate her hair, and raise money for St. Jude's was a special friend. The girl at our church got cancer. She had cancer, and I felt real bad. And then she stopped it, having cancer, and she got it again. And so that really made me want to do it. Surrounded by her sisters and very proud parents, Roger puts Sophia in the chair and starts working. Is he cutting it yet? First he ties her hair, then cuts it, saving it for the locks of love. Then the clippers come out. Awesome. Pickles. As he works on Sophia's locks, what Roger Schuler is doing cuts deep into his emotions. That's because he's been cancer free for six years. It's just unbelievable. I mean, I think with a little girl as, as attached to their hair and, and looks at that age, uh, for somebody to be able to go ahead and, and just throw it all to the wind for a good cause, I think is, is just amazing. I don't really care what anyone says. I'm just doing it for a cause and I want to make other people happy. A new look, a bag full of hair to donate, and a heart as big as her smile. And Sophia was able to raise $1,500 for St. Jude's Hospital. To find out how you can donate, visit our website, cbs21.com. Click Find It when you get there. Live with the York County Mobile Newsroom in Fairview Township tonight, Eva Roman, CBS 21 News.